Recover the model goes back way to the beginning when we think about calculus as a ladder. And the ladder has technically infinite rungs, but you guys really spend, between Calc 1 and Calc 2, the vast majority of your time on three rungs. This one is the function rung. It's good old-fashioned f of x. And it says, you give me an input, and I'll crunch some numbers and spit out an output. And in Calc 1, you spent all your time finding derivatives, which is your rate of change model. And that says, you give me an input, and I'll tell you how the output is changing per input. And then in this class, you've been taking the antiderivatives, which is going up the ladder, and that gives you area under a curve, things like that. So the, the important thing to remember is that you can go up and down this ladder regardless of which rung you start on. Calc 1, they start you here, and you drop down one rung. And then if you have to take the second derivative, you drop down another rung. Sometimes in this class, they start you on this rung, and they say antiderive it and climb up and use that antiderivative for some reason, and you get the antiderivative. This question, the very first unit of this whole class, they're always starting you on the derivative rung, and they're, so they're giving you the rate of change. This represents the rate of change, and you are finding the function that it came from. That's the whole concept of recover the model. I'm going to start you down here, and you, I'm giving you the answer, and you have to give me the question, kind of a thing. So the way you do that, it's a very stepwise procedure. You do. You're going to anti-derive and put plus C on the end of it. Good old-fashioned that business. Then you're going to use the little given clue, which will always be given, to solve for C. And then your final answer is you have to put everything all together into one complete recovered model, which is with the correct units and all that stuff. So. So the first thing, here's the detailed stuff, is he wants you to say what is the name, what's going to be the name of the recovered function, and there's details that go into that. If, and it, and it depends on what he has named the function he's giving you. If he starts you out and he names the rate of change function lowercase no tick of x, when you go up the ladder, the new name is uppercase every time. If the rate of change function that he gives you is lowercase with a tick and you go up the ladder, the name of the parent is, you drop the tick mark. So far so good? Here he's given us uppercase with the tick mark. So what's the name of the parent going to be? Uppercase without the tick mark. Uppercase without the tick mark. That's exactly right. So those are all little details that, you know, it's worth a point or two, depending on what the whole problem's worth. So now he wants you to say, okay, 
big D, the function I'm recovering, is the antiderivative of this with respect to P, which is, and now you have to actually antiderive this. So if you don't have this language, big D of P equals antiderivative D prime of P dP, it's a point or two because he wants to see all of those little details. So we got to antiderive this. I'm going to rewrite it. That is a little sheet. You add one to the exponent and divide by that new number. And you have to remember to put plus C. Plus C. So all of that is step one. You anti-derive with the plus C, but if you don't have that specific language on there, you could get this totally correct, but you won't get all the points because you don't have that business. Now we use the little given mathematical clue which is this piece. That is a clue or a piece of mathematical information about the recovered function. This guy says, you tell me how much something costs, the price, and I'll tell you how the demand is changing per dollar of price. This clue says, when whatever we're buying costs $4.75, this many units are demanded, period. So this clue means every single time, if you put a 4.75 into the antiderivative wherever you see the variable, the whole equation is equal to that number. And that's what lets me solve for C. So this guy says, if you put... 4.75 in for the variable, it's equal to 8.55. That gives you an equation with one variable, and you can solve that. The question is, how are you going to solve it? What is it equal to begin with before you do that? Nothing. So you can just write it. So when we first anti-derived it? Like what work are you supposed to show? You were supposed to show exactly what I had written there. With da -da -da -da, P to the negative 1 over negative no, 1 plus C. C. Okay. So not equal to anything. Correct. It's Because that's just an equation. That's just a new recovered model. Okay. This is where we actually are using it to help us. So I do I usually put this kid I'll put that into y1 leaving that as x or leaving that as the variable and then I go to my home screen so then I would have y1 plus c is 855. And if I subtract the y1, c is equal to 855 minus y1 with that plugged in. So that's how I solve these. I got c is 712.908. Seven twelve point nine. C is seven twelve point nine oh eight. So that's step two. Use the given clue to solve for C. So now we got to put it all together. Correct name, correct units, everything. So the name of my new function is big D of P with no tick mark. Then I write the anti-derived function of 
but instead of putting plus C, I put what C is equal to. And here's another detail. Make sure that your C has three decimals. Round it to the third, because you're building a model, so you're going back to God knows how long ago when you first learned how to build models. The coefficients on the variables, the coefficients in the model have to have three decimal places. So it's got to have the correct name, it's got to have the correct numbers with the units and all that, or the decimals correct, and now it has to have the right units. And basically all you have to do is look back up here and take out everything between the per and the comma. So this gives demand for the product or demand in number of units when P is or represents the price in dollars. This right here is your final answer. That is the recovered model, fully recovered model. Correct name, got my numbers, have my units. I've dropped the language that talks about something being a rate of change.